Pinnacle Television welcomes you to a very fresh edition of Talking Politics again today. And I have gentlemen who I can beat my chest and tell you that they know a lot about developments at home, developments abroad, development in different parts of the universe. And of course, what we do here is to ensure that we have free minds and we are not in any way biased either against individuals or governments or institutions. We are very free and we are so free to express our minds as individuals, individually or corporately. Reverend Humphrey Aragasa, I'd like to welcome you to this platform. We appreciate you for coming. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And my boss. <laughs> Pastor Collins of everybody is so used to you, and so I am delighted to welcome you to this program, sir. Thank you very much. My pleasure to be here. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, first and foremost, if we take our minds back just about a week ago, a federal high court in Port Harcourt gave a ruling in favor of. Uh, uh, in favor of government and in favor of Fedo State House of Assembly, which had earlier on approached it to make a declaration on whether the National Assembly uh, was right in wanting to take over the proceedings and uh, functions of the Fedo State House of Assembly. Now, that decision having been reached, uh, political pundits in Fedo State have said that to bring it into a very, very good final thing. Uh, there is the need uh, for now for the speaker to make a formal invitation available to members elect because there seems to be a finality on this issue make a final invitation to them asking not pleading with them asking them to fall in line by making themselves available to take it, the relevant oath of um, uh, that they need to take to become members of the Edo State House of Assembly. Otherwise, I am also told that we're going to discuss it here, that the Speaker has a right, therefore, to declare their seats vacant if they turn down the overture. I don't know what you have in mind, uh, Reverend Alfrey. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I, I, I see each development in Nigeria as a, a, a chess pawn where individuals play their games trying to outreach others. Uh, I'm also worried about the political vis-a-vis, the legal implications of the life we live. Because, uh, uh, over time we see individuals uh, take actions and you wonder. But then you go to the legal terrain you find very disturbing and encouraging judgments on both ends. Well, uh, they would normally say that uh, if uh, justice is to be served, it's to be seen to be done. But in political palace, we always know that uh, justice is a relative thing, depending on who is uh, dispensing it. Well, we. The, the development in the two states, uh, I, I find it intriguing and a little bit worried. One is the fact that we have a situation where we have one political party, not two, control the majority, absolute. One wouldn't have expected a disturbance. We have seen a seamless transition of life. But here we have uh, a very disturbing trend. Well, like I said, the judgment has been given, but you have to ask yourself. Do judgments always settle political funds? Most of the time it goes back to political environments to settle those issues that like we normally say. Uh, I would expect that each person begin to understand that politics ends with election and governance begins on behalf of the people. I keep also telling people that when people are elected, they're not elected by just one political party. They are elected by the citizens that transcend political parties. And if you look at the history of, of politics, the number of persons registered in political parties are 
too small compared to the citizens. In the I agree country. entirely with you, Humphrey. I just wanted to go straight yes, to so this point. I, I'm saying the that right of the speaker to declare the seats vacant if they, if they, yeah, they, they, they eventually turn it down. Depends on what the law says. All right. What does the law say, and what length of time is at the discretion of the speaker? Okay. Of to do that, because I believe that if they were elected to serve the people, they should transcend political interests. If they are not there now, it means the people's interest is lost. Precisely. And nobody talks about it. And that's a cost that the people cannot bear. Okay. So, and they cannot allow it to be, become such a lacuna that the people's interest is thwarted forever. So the, the speaker should have his operational guards by constitution. Let me transfer the lacuna talk. straight away from you now. Can I transfer the lacuna to you, sir? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, um, what I know is that if you remember. Uh, absence, absence himself from plenary mm -hmm. for um, a number of 180 days. Okay. All right. Um, not by reason of um, sickness or sickness or backed up by a sick report from by, a medical by, doctor. By report, by yes. Sickness backed up by report or I mean um, one competent reason or the other. Not that he went to the village to conduct another wedding <laughs> and then he stays there for <laughs> as long as he likes. The speaker is at liberty to declare the seat vacant. Precisely. Right now, um, by the number of days that the you know, House of Assembly has sat, uh, we have 92 days already that these guys have absented themselves from uh, sitting. We can now conveniently say that they absented themselves oh, by yes, virtue. Yes, because precisely. They refused to present themselves for swearing. All right. They absented themselves. There's no justifiable reason why they have not appeared at the House of Assembly. If you claim that the proclamation letter was not uh, duly served on you, but you are on judicial notice that the House is sitting right now. The House is sitting, no doubt. Yes, you, the House is sitting. Uh, and you can see the reports, so you cannot claim not to know. All right, many of them are ensconced in one cozy apartment in Abuja. And they enjoy themselves as well. So uh, uh, very soon, I think that reason, uh, reason will come to bear, and they will understand that they are depriving their constituents of the benefit of their sitting in the house so that they can do the work for which they have been elected. Uh, beyond that, beyond the legal um, aspect there's a political aspect that you need to look at all right um, like my brother said it's very unfortunate that we're having a house a 24 member house of 24 members of the apc all right and yet they have this um this um, this problem uh, but, but we, we, we must take it back suddenly they became a misunderstanding between the predecessor and the successor. <laughs> Without mentioning names. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then the, the successor suddenly realized that he should have taken more than a cursory interest in who became a member of the House of Assembly because mm. that's where strings are pulled. The reason why the Ambody treatment could be meted on Ambody was because somebody was controlling the House of Assembly. And if somebody wanted to wanted to protest, now you said this somebody twice. Who is somebody? Somebody is the former Lagos State <laughs> Governor. I'm sure you know. Okay. Now, now somebody was pulling the strings, and when somebody wanted to protest, protest, the House of Assembly duly served him a, an impeachment notice. All right. And then he backtracked, and then asked them, "What do you want?" In football, you call that a red card. <laughs> <laughs> now, so that kind of treatment would have been possible in a Lagos State if the successor had not taken a proactive step by issuing a letter of proclamation. Some say, uh, I've heard the APC national chairman say that letter was issued at, or the, the, the inauguration was done at nocturnal hours. Whether at nocturnal hours or whatever hours was done, the, the inauguration That was held. inauguration. The inauguration held and members came for the swearing in and people were sworn in and a, a speaker was elected. So the house is sitting right now according to law. So. Because of that, the successor needed to make sure that he had his own people on seats to prevent the ambody treatment. All right, so now he can call the shots. He can say what he wants. 
Because if he didn't do that, we would have had a situation where he wants to say one thing and then the guy at the house for some reason is a red card. I, I heard you chuckle. Yes, there are two things I just made just first, of all, like what? first of all, do they make you angry? No, they're not making me angry. Okay. They just make the discussion a little bit important. Okay. One is the fact that we're talking of if a member of the house excludes himself for a number of days, mm. he is automatically uh, losing his seat. So his seat has to be declared vacant. The seat has, yes. yes. But this, in this instance, they are not members of the house yet. They are members elect, mm. and that's where the problem is. The constitution is silent uh, at, about at, the, at what the, point. At now what point? should the period begin to count? Yeah, when you have been inaugurated as a member of house, okay, it begins to count. But now they are not. Okay, they are just members elect. They are sitting so now. Then the again, again, it's a constitutional issue that should prick the minds of constitutional lawyers and others mm. in fighting the constitution. I, I saw you li lift up your yes, fingers. Yes, my was, my was, role is that of the referee. Going to, I was going to say yes. that between a member elect and a member who's sworn in, all right, the, from the day that the, the house is inaugurated, it is assumed that as a member elect, your time begins to count. It should begin to your count. Your time begins to count. It, so, you know, in law, there's no assumption. No, you well, no, no, there are assumptions in law. See, I've had this argument. That's what, what I'm talking about. There, 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 there are assumptions in law. That so long as they are not uh, being adopted, inducted into the house, they cannot be called members of the House of Assembly. Okay. Until that is done. The house is in session. The house is in session Legally. for those who are there. Who have been inducted into it? They are no, members of the house. Nothing prevents anybody else from being there. Yes, they they can come. That's what I'm saying. This is what I said. Sometimes you need political uh, uh, thoughts to settle these matters. Conscience should tell them that they are denying a people. Conscience in Nigeria? Well, that's where it's, uh, whether whether conscience is lost or not, but conscience has to be in place. Okay. Okay. Conscience should let them know. And that's where this way also the cons the constituents also has a role to play. You could the constituents should from the area of the constitution. Does the constitution recognize conscience in this kind of discussion? Well, conscience and morals are, are the beacons of any society. All right. Whether we like, whether it is written or not written. So like the British, like the British constitution. constitution. Okay. They are not written, but they are morals and they are taught. So I think now the constituents should take it upon themselves to either recall their members. Or force INEC to declare an election because they, their mother have absconded. So I'm concerned. So that's what the constituent should be doing. Two is the fact that I also do not believe that two wrongs make a right. When the issue of the inauguration was being set, the date and the time became, to me, was important. Because, again, politics most of the time are played in nocturnal hours, and that's why they're doing what they're doing. But in normal days, when does uh, Parliament sit? There's a time frame for Parliament to sit. If that time frame was not what was used, to me, it's an immoral act. All right, you are opening new, new areas, and I think um, at some other time we'll look at the importance of these areas and see how relevant they are to our discussions. I want to thank you so very much indeed for being with us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll take a short break, and of course, we will be right back. 24 hours, 7 days a week. For more exciting, educative, and entertaining programs, such as Law and You, Talk Politics, Entertainment Gist, Relationship Tourism, and other programs, keep watching Pinaco TV. You can watch, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Pinaco TV Online. You can also visit our website at www.pinnacletv.com Follow us on Facebook at Pinnacle TV Online or call us on 081-546-99989 Pinnacle TV Top Quality Broadcasting You're welcome back. So, uh, for quite some time now, the the media has been quite conspicuous in reporting the activities of Mr. President. And uh, two areas caught my attention, and I think we should talk about them. The very first one is the idea that um, Mr. President has uh, removed the, first of all, dissolved the Economic Advisory Council, 
removing Mr. Vice President as the chairman. Although there was an economic uh, committee that held, I think, two days back um, in Asorok, over which Mr. Vice President presided. Uh, I think that's one of uh, the very beautiful things that you do in politics. You can push this way and then take a shot, a penalty. It may not necessarily pass to the goalkeeper, so there is no goal. But again, another one is that he compelled Mr. Vice President to now report back to him on issues that he that too in the past he never did. So, uh, so which means that some people said uh, this is an idea to curtail or clip the wings of Mr. Vice President or reduce his influence. That is one as Mr. Vice President and then produce an effect on his constituency, his political constituency. Uh, looking at his, you know, he has a godfather in Ashwadu, Ahmed Bola Tinumbu. And so uh, things are just getting through now from 2019 to 2023. So if 2023 begins to walk out from 2019, sir, I think everybody would have gotten crippled before we get to the real 2023. So what do you say, sir? Okay, um, it's obvious. Um, the handwriting was already on the wall even long before now. Which of the handwritings now? The handwriting being that there's a... Many, many. There's a many, many... Of <laughs> 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 the, the message has been that, you know, there is an agenda, and I, I think I can be free to speak about this. There's an agenda that we know of, that which is of the plan to both Islamize and Fulanize the country. And certainly uh, the vice president does not fit into that agenda. Okay. Right now, after the inauguration 2019, uh, the president told them, after the inaugurated the ministers, he told them that now if he wants to see him go through the chief of staff. Now, we have discussed that on this program. Also includes the, the vice president. Right, and, and in fact, there are people who are postulated right now that you have uh, Vice President Agni and Vice President uh, Sosha. All right, uh, the one who does the trader money, they have also taken from him, and the one who goes to visit uh, believed people and uh, attends to very uh, um, As condolence visits. Condolence visits. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the assignment that he has been, that's, uh, been given to him. Now, now, the whole idea being that, you know, we know that. Uh, but just one second, Abiba. Is there anything wrong in putting uh, a pastor, for instance? It doesn't matter whether he's vice president or deputy president or whatever, in charge of condolence visits. Isn't that biblical? Oh, don't forget. He's the most competent person in fact. <laughs> he's the most competent person. <laughs> but don't forget that the vice president is, as we have referred to it, as a spectator. Oh. Whether vice president or deputy governor, he's at the mercy of the president. Okay. And the president decided whatever what decide what he wants to give to him. Okay, so, so I, there I, are I really those that it is believed that the vice president stepped on. Mm. One when he relieved the um, DSS man of his of his position mm -hmm. uh, when the president was on sick, mm -hmm. sick leave, and the other time when he removed the uh, he was the one who recommended the removal of um, the former um, secretary to the government of the federation, mm -hmm. the Grasscutter. You know, Precisely. That grass man. Mm. All right. So, and these are powerful people in the cabal that the vice president had presided over their removal. You recognize this cabal scene? I'm sorry? You recognize cabal? Yes. Oh, that I can be. The cabal, okay. the cabal that's headed by the chief of staff, the okay. Kiari, okay. All right. Who is the de facto president of this country today? Okay. All right. He is the one who calls the shots. We discussed right. that By the time program. we subject the ministers, all right, to go through a person, you have made that person as powerful as yourself. Precisely. But who okay. sees the president is very. Whatever I need to discuss with the president is what determines my importance in the government. Mm. And if someone is the one who determines whether I see the president or not, that person becomes to me as important as the president. Because if that person says no, I don't see the president, and then my importance has been whittled down, which is also what they have subjected the vice president to now. They are going to whittle down his influence, whittle down his power, whittle down his, uh, his, uh, his whatever uh, strength he has to ensure that whatever plans he and his godfather may have 
will never see the light of day. That's a very pre big one. Do, do you share the same opinion, sir? Well, I, I'll share some of them. Okay. But I, I'm not. I, I've told myself that I don't want to be disturbed by things I hear about the country because my mind is important to me. No, we're not talking about things you heard about the country and things so you are going to hear. We're talking about the one we are talking about. Yes, that's part of it. So, Let's so I'm hearing it. it. Okay. So, so the, the, the point here is, is that the each president or each governor has his agenda. Okay. And there are not things that are just being done. Once you compromise... His personal agenda or the agenda of the party yeah, that well, elected it. Well, you see, in Nigeria and Africa, we don't have a party agenda. It's the individual that controls the party. Actually. And that's why you can have the party of president or governor as the leader of the party when you have a chairman. So, leader is bigger than chairman. That's some of the things. So, because he has the pulse of the state, and because our politics in Nigeria is done by money, he who pays the paper details the tune. I can't... Uh, Uzo Kalos, those days, said that politics is business. I can't invest his money in politics and don't get the benefit of it. Oh. And that's, that's what it is. So they invest their money in it. And they put persons who will bring the investment in returns. You know, and I, I don't have sympathy for politicians because when you sell your conscience, that's what happens. What are the principles that guide your acceptance of an appointment? If you don't have, then you are ready to sacrifice anything, yeah. which is what the politics of this country is all about. People sacrifice everything without conscience, without morals, and the pontificate of our issues. So, when the, the, the things are being done, within the government since it started 2015 has always been run by individuals. Mm -hmm. Also forget that this thing happened at the last time. When persons uh, from behind do things and the and uh, our vice president then couldn't, didn't even know what was happening in government. The same thing is going to happen. Because one of the things I've had to read back in history of Nigeria mm. And look at the uh, political developments of the North, the South, the East, and the British government. Mm. Looking at the incursion of the Utmadan photos with Jim and others. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've tried to convince myself some things that are laid down principles. Unfortunately, the South doesn't have laid down principles. And I keep saying Nigeria didn't have a coherent uh, way forward. There were federal lords in the South, in the North, in the East with different agendas. The British needed a safe way to get the wealth of the country. Isn't that why we're talking about restructuring? So, so yeah, but the restructuring is okay again by definition. Okay. What are you, even in the South, we don't always all agree on what the definition of, of our restructure is. Okay. So until there's a coherent uh, understanding, and that's why you see the the, the the political play of this nation was distorted by the British to the fact that you don't know the population of the North. They tell you a majority, but you don't know the population. And politics is a game of number. Well, I think somebody said 51% two days back. <laughs> where, where did they get this from? Is that well, you're asking thing? me. You know, I'm saying, these are some of the things. And they use, they continually use that. They have more local governments. They have more states. They have more of the wealth that is brought by the South to develop themselves. And yet the South cannot, even within themselves. They talk they more cannot, of the landmass. Yeah, they have... It, they have landmass. Uh -huh. You have a landmass and you don't have the resources. Uh -huh. You don't eat the landmass. It's the resources that develop the landmass. The landmass that don't come by the population. There are countries that have wide uh, uh, expanse of land but cannot be. Oh, the Nigeria, by Mali, for instance, is bigger. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You have a places. How many of the places in the north? If not Boko Haram, we have known of Sambisa Forest. That That's they say true. it's bigger than some countries. It is. Okay. How, what is the who's, which human being lives there? And they count these trees, which they cannot even count, mm -hmm. and they give us population figure. Okay. You know, and we have seen over the period. And I keep saying we in the south have made what is happening to happen because we give, agree to them. Look at how the military have been distorted. Mm -hmm. Look at how the intelligence have been distorted. Mm -hmm. Are people not there? Are people supposed to be there? Okay. When the we, 1990 we, we, construction was not, done, we're not going to talk about those ones. I want know, to sleep in my house. No, but these are the foundations yes. on which they are built. Yes. And you, you see, when the foundation is destroyed, mm. the building cannot stand, and that's where we are. Okay. The foundation is not able to carry, and people have manipulated, and they are still manipulating. So that's the president is pulling the scripts. You spoke very eloquently about uh, Mr. Vice President's position being honestly. Uh, Slides down. Come back on me. 
whittle down my power today, whittle it down tomorrow, whittle that day after. Is it possible for Mr. Vice President, for instance, to look at the situation and say, I am a professor, professor of law for if that I'm matter. If I'm won't do, why hasn't done that up to now? Yeah, I go to get out of this, why, can't I? Mean, he's a pastor. He's a pastor. He's a pastor, he's a professor, he's a senior advocate of Nigeria. And so people are wondering, how do you how do you find it comfortable to report to this man who has no value whatsoever for what you represent or for what you are? You have no value whatsoever. And how do you see all of these things going on and then you can still take it in? You see you, your powers as the vice president being significantly being whittled down and yet to do nothing about it. And he's a silly pull out. Because of the interest he represents. Because of the interest he represents. Because of the interest he represents. <laughs> That you see where difficult we are. Because he's planted there for a purpose. Oh, right. The purpose being hold the fort for me until I'm ready to come in. Uh, hey, hold the fort for me until I come in. Yes. Uh, How about what was he really brought to politics because of his merits? Because of his merits. No, what he, was he? He, 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 he was no, he was at brought that time, as a serviceable instrument. At that time, he, he was a no, senior advocate of Nigeria, no, even see, as much as he is now. He was already a professor, the, the was issue, a advocate no, of Nigeria. I'm not talking about whether what he is as a person. Yes. So what politically, you looking at? Politically. politically mm. He didn't have a grant. He was okay. on he, which he was he commissioner was, of justice. He was commissioner of justice. Commissioner of justice in if justice. you wait, if you zone a position to the west, yes. say let us go and vote. He yes. won't win. He cannot. So right. he represented an interest. No, like here, said, no, here, no, if you here, ask me, here you I might say you he cannot. That, I would say to you that this man looking at him from every parameter was sufficiently um 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 he, he merited that position. Of vice he president. Or he was sufficiently no, no. meritorious of that position. He merited the position of vice president. Here we're talking about a professor of law. We're talking about a senior advocate of Nigeria. We're talking about um, a senior pastor. I don't see any reason why he would not qualify to be the father president. of his own no, children. Yeah, I'm not father saying, of his own children. Every, you, of his are you not qualified to be a oh, vice okay. president? Of course. So if, I, if, I, if, I was, if I was elected see, vice no, president, no, no, would you say that I have no political wait, foundation? Let's look at the issues. And I keep saying, let's look at the issues of thought. You mentioned something about Adam Bode, for instance. Is Adam Bode not qualified to be a governor? And then he was well, governor. Somehow. Wait. He was supposed to go for second day, which is normal. But he stepped on the toes of his master, who brought it. Nobody, ever, told him, nobody ever said that. No, he, he, we have plain things. Let's let nobody say so Nobody, nobody ever said, said you cannot that. go back. Uh -huh. He didn't say he wasn't going back. Yes. No, he didn't say so. Yes. Somebody said you cannot go back because his interest, as far as he was concerned... He made concerted efforts to come back. He made, mm. but the person who brought him said you can no longer come back, have somebody else. Because he made him. Yes, that's what I'm saying. The same thing, the same person made who the, this vice president who is. So uh, cannot, he was brought oh, by... But that's the point that we're making. The point that we're making is, okay, so somebody um pushed him forward yes which is what happens to everybody and the person push him back somebody push him forward and the person is uh, can push him back ah. all right see what we have in the just for instance right now the person who pushed the successor forward is the one who's saying sorry you are, you are misbehaving it's difficult to push you know what i'm saying but the success the princess is, is finding it difficult to push him back that's the problem that's the problem, that's the problem now, of in, the, in, the, the, in the case politics. of the vice president the case of the vice president he was pushed forward for a purpose, the purpose being go there because in any case, the man who pushed him forward was going to go there himself. But he found out that oh, listen, a Muslim Muslim ticket can't fly. So, Precisely. So, so you go there with a Christian, with a Christian so, uh, so, so that, that, hold the fort for me. These are issues and when it's time for me to go, then I can come forward. Yeah, that so was, that for that reason, talking. the vice president is unable right now in the face of severe provocation so is disabled. to pull out. He is disabled. By his, he is disabled yes. by circumstances see, beyond see, the that is what I'm saying the same. If he came into the environment with his volition and said, I need to do this, and he got there by it, he could have been able to say to himself, Yes, I've taken the number and I'll get out. You see, when you are bossed into something that you don't have for over, you have this problem we are having. And that's how African politics will never grow. We must learn to become individuals of our principles and of our moral guardian. Don't worry, we'll get everybody down to South Africa where we can take decisions on our own. Our very distinct viewers will take another short break and when we come back, we will look at South Africa the way we ought to look at South Africa. Stay tuned. 24 hours, 7 days a week. For more exciting, educative and entertaining programs such as love and you, talk politics, Relationship tourism and other programs. Keep watching Pinaco TV. You can watch, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Pinaco TV Online. You can also visit 
our website at www.pinnacletv.com. Follow us on Facebook at Pinnacle TV Online or call us on 081 Welcome back. Pastor Kodofo, again, I, I like to begin from your angle, looking at the situation in South Africa. The xenophobia thing we're talking about is not a new thing. It has been in South Africa for very many years, even from the days of um, Becky. I think the, the, the 2008, that was the first one, and then it came in through the president that came in there. And the general opinion, as a matter of fact, that every South African, black or white, is xenophobic. And this situation now seems to have taken a toll on the political stature of the ANC. I, I can see uh, Malema uh, coming forward very gradually, and then he is gathering his position is gathering speed. And I will not be surprised, for instance, if in the final analysis he becomes the leader. In fact, I have had an occasion to refer to uh, Julius Malema as the soon to be revealed president of the uh, South African Republic. And I'm very happy for him. The truth of the matter is that all of these past leaders, uh, with the exception of, um, with, uh, of Nelson Mandela, mm. they all have this very myopic vision of um, a South Africa that houses only South Africans. All right, without giving call recourse to the fact that South Africa became what it is right now by reason of the marvelous assistance that some countries like Nigeria, Nigeria being prominent amongst them, gave to South Africa to come out of the clutches of uh, apartheid. apartheid. All right, uh, uh, and for which many of us believe that South Africans should be very, very grateful. And what they have shown is a very high degree of ingratitude. And I want to thank God for someone like Malema, who is actually cashing in on the incompetence of the incompetence of the ruling uh, of the leaders. All right, and, and many of them have become a very huge disappointment, including the incumbent president of uh, South Africa and the one who, who was his uh, predecessor, all right, in curbing these xenophobic uh, tendencies. And it's unfortunate indeed because what they do not realize and which my lemma has been singing to their ears is if you take out these Nigerians, you take out these South African nationals, you are going to find that the, the South African economy will, will cripple. They don't know that yet. All right, because the South African as a person is an intrinsically lazy person. That's Thank you, sir. Be, be, because of my time, it's very important for you to look at Malema. Julius is growing fast politically, and uh, so, some people said to me it is because he was schooled by Nelson Mandela and Winnie Mandela. And of course, uh, he graduated from their school. And others, unfortunately, grew up in the jungle fighting for independence. What do you think about Malema? I, I, I have a very big mixed feelings for African politicians. They speak things that are good in opposition. And sometimes when they get to power... Okay, you're talking about the future now. When they get to power, they behave in the same way. Okay. As the predecessors. One is because there are fundamental structures that when you come into a place, you find it difficult to exhibit what you talk about because of the structures you find. And bad habits are not easily broken. And politics is not something you have a long-term principle of. You have eight years or so. Even though you have Africans who are uh, inheritors of power over the years, they still find it difficult to implement some of the things they talk about. So I, 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 I enjoy his, his boldness. I, I appreciate his, his, his uh, attack on things that are wrong or things that are bad. But I, I find it very difficult for me to accept the fact that if he were in that same position, things would not happen. Again. Thank you so very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. I have to draw curtains on our proceedings for this morning. You can be very rest assured that we'll come back your way with these topics because they are very, very current. And the gentlemen to whom you have listened are also wonderful indeed. Thank you so much. God bless you. 24 hours, 7 days a week. For more exciting, educative and entertaining programs such as law and you, talk politics, entertainment gist, relationship talks, and other programs, keep watching Pinnacle TV. Watch, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Pinnacle TV Online. You can also visit 
our website at www.com.